Yo, 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 what it do, what it do, it's your boy Nick, welcome back at it again with another video, man. And in today's video, what I got for you guys is the best controller settings here for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Season 1 and Warzone as well, since they are both identical, man. Now, this video has been extremely, extremely overdue because, you know, I kept pushing it back and you guys kept leaving comments on my videos and live streams, by the way. Go follow my live stream, twitch.tv slash it's enigma for the win. The link is in the description down below. But anyways, you know, this video has been long overdue. You guys kept asking me like, yo, what are your settings or whatever? And I'm going to show you guys that here today, man. And by the way, these are the best settings to use in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and in Warzone Season 1, man. So let's get into it, man. So for horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity, I usually keep it on a 7.7. 7. And, you know, the lower your sensitivity is, the more accurate you are. But you're not going to get a chance to, you know, turn on people. So 7.7 7 is the middle ground for me. And I extremely love it. You know, it shows in my uh, gameplay videos as well. So 7.7 7 is the way to go. ADS stick sensitivity for low and high zoom. I usually keep that at default. Button layout, I have bumper jumper tactical, and that is where you jump with the L2 button. And uh, this is for PlayStation, by the way. I don't know what it is for Xbox, but you jump with the L2 button and you use the uh, tacticals with X and you go prone with the right stick and knife with the uh, circle button on PlayStation. So that is key right there. But if you don't want to jump with the L2 button, I recommend... Uh, using tactical you know you jump with x but bumper jumper has been the way to go for me since black ops 3 but all the call of duties before black ops 3 i used to play on tactical uh for drop shotting but now jump shotting is so so key in gunfights and that is why i have a bumper jumper now i flip the l1 and r1 with the r2 l2 buttons pretty much this is the aim down and you know throwing equipment and whatnot and I flipped those because, you know, I had an advantage, you know, aiming down with the L1 or R1 button as opposed to with the triggers. So that is key right there. You know, I used to play, uh, you know, back in PS3, L1 and R1 used to be the standard. But I don't know why they changed it for, you know, PS4 and PS5. But L1 and R1 is the way to go because you have a slight advantage over those that aim with the triggers. So invert vertical look, I have it on disabled aim response curve type. I have it on linear and, you know, linear is when like the stick directly uh, maps to the aim rate. So pretty much if I have it on, if I go all the way right, it'll go all the way right. If I keep it in the middle, it'll stay in the middle. But uh, standard, I'm just going to explain the difference between all three of these real quick. Standard is when, uh, you know, it just like locks on. But if you move it slight, slightly to the left, it's not going to, you know, affect it as much. And dynamic is pretty much the reverse. If you move it to the left, it's going to move it to the right, but it's still going to be steady as hell. So it's going to be, you know, a faster response time than standard. So if you're a very, very accurate player, I recommend linear. But if you're not dynamic is the way to go for you next we got controller vibration i don't know why some people play with controller vibration on i know some of my friends do i don't understand why and you know i have it disabled because it does mess around with your accuracy and you know when you have it disabled you could just be accurate as hell you could challenge people from like 400 meters away no problem and let's like it is very 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 helpful man you know the controller is steady in your hands it's not going to be going up and down all the time so controller vibration disabled is the way to go trigger effect i believe this is a ps5 exclusive setting only and i have it disabled uh because one i don't shoot with the triggers and two if you do shoot with the triggers man it's, it's just it's just gonna feel a lot more heavier you know aiming in with the sniper rifle or a lmg so trigger effect is a big no-no especially in uh black ops cold war it's no good now for gameplay target aim assist obviously you want to have that on because if you have disabled 
your aim will go all over the place so for target aim assist mode i have this on standard and uh you know standard and legacy are pretty much the default here for call of duty black ops cold war and in warzone with uh legacy being the default in warzone and standard in black ops cold war but if you guys are new to the call of duty scene i suggest going for uh focusing but if you guys are uh you know experienced players precision is the way to go but focusing if you guys are new once you guys get the hang of that go to standard or legacy that's pretty much the way to go right there ads aim assist enabled uh airborne mantle behavior uh, automatic aim down sight behavior hold uh steady aim behavior hold uh, armor behavior apply all pretty much this setting is so clutch in fire team and in warzone as well because if you have the apply one it's pretty much gonna apply only a single armor plate but if you have apply all it'll apply all the armor plates that are missing like let's say if all three of them are missing and you don't want to press triangle you know it'll press it once and you'll get all of them out out of your way man so apply all is very very clutch right there attack vehicle mode uh aim base i don't really mess around with that but that is the default one right there uh moving on to advanced we have the stick layout i have it on default if you look up you'll look up if you move the r stick up you'll look up pretty much that's the default right there for cod uh the left stick minimum and max threshold and the right stick min and uh max threshold i have that on you know default right there as well i believe the defaults are these settings right here 1099 1099 controller sounds i believe this is a playstation and uh exclusive setting and i have this on enabled pretty much like you'll hear like kill streaks going through your controller you know your chopper gunner uh sounds going through the controller it's it's kind of like you know an aesthetic for playstation controller uh users as well it's pretty pretty cool uh, auto move forward i have that on disabled auto sprint disabled uh sprint behavior toggle sprint cancel reload this is very very clutch man i have that on enabled because let's say if i'm reloading and an enemy is right next to me i could sprint to cancel that reload and smoke him man so enabled is pretty pretty much clutch right there because if you have it on disabled and the enemy has a chance to you know kill you <laughs> so you know enable that uh setting man that thing is very very clutch uh parachute auto deploy i have that on enabled equipment behavior hold and interact and reload behavior tap to reload so that is my controller settings right here man uh you know give it a try it is absolutely the best controller settings here to run on call of duty black ops cold war and in warzone as well but yeah if you guys like the content and if you guys are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button man you guys do not want to miss out on new content from call of duty black ops cold war and in warzone man i'm telling you guys that right now but anyways leave a like subscribe if you guys are new man and it's been your boy enigma and i'm out peace